at the moment, obviously, we produce natural gas engines or biogas engines, uh, but the first 100% uh, hydrogen, hydrogen engine we produced was in 2012. Uh, so we've had eight years operational experience of running 100% hydrogen engines. At the moment, uh, all natural gas engines are obviously quite carbon intensive or because of the lowering of the carbon intensity figures on the electricity by the national grid uh, every year, it's getting harder and harder for the environmental benefits of CHP to still remain like they used to. Um, heat is one of the hardest things to try and decarbonise. Um, it can't be electrified uh, as easily. 30% uh, uh, roughly of all the carbon emissions in the UK are from um, heating, uh, domestic and industrial heating. Uh, Decarbonising the gas is pretty much the only way you can be able to tackle all these things in an easy way. Uh, hydrogen is really the key to all this, uh, it's the key for decarbonising the gas. Um, for us it's really a simple adoption uh, of our normal natural gas engines, uh, just with a bit more technology onto it, uh, effectively injection uh, systems for the hydrogen into the cylinder heads and we can run the engines uh, happily on 100% hydrogen hydrogen uh, for every engine uh, that we manufacture. So it's really a case that you can buy a natural gas engine now uh, and then run it on hydrogen. Part of one of the reasons we chose 2G was the, their ability to innovate and, and these different ideas and ultimately I see the, the phase we're in now we've got the, the unit installed is, is how we optimise the CHPs and how we future proof the CHPs. We as a trust want to, want to be carbon neutral and with a far more ambitious target than perhaps the government's target. But we've obviously just invested in these sets which will hopefully be on, on this site and SSU, one of our smaller sites, for the next 15 years. So it's only natural that we, we now want to start looking at what's the next stage of optimising these CHPs, what can we do to, to bring new technologies and new innovations into to how we operate these sets. I, I suppose the biggest hurdle for us is at, at the minute with hydrogen is, is the electrolyzing of the, of the gas and that's the real if we can overcome that hurdle and, and we're, something we're actively want to work in partnership with 2G is to, to how we can come across that, that problem because it benefits, not only does it benefit us as a trust, it benefits the NHS as a, as a wider establishment. I mean at the moment now, the, the, the major um, problem at the moment is people having hydrogen or getting hold of the hydrogen. So all the systems we're doing at the moment run from electrolysis uh, plants, so splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. That's why hospitals are a really, really good uh, target group for us because obviously uh, we want the hydrogen to go into the engines, the hospitals want the oxygen. If people are buying an asset now that's got a 20-year lifespan uh, and in two years, three years, four years, whatever time scale, everything changes to the, the hydrogen and they can't run their engine on hydrogen, they've, they've paid for a very expensive asset that's now stranded and needs to be replaced. So natural gas engines uh, in the UK uh, for the environmental benefit, I mean if people don't have the environmental concerns they'll still be able to run um, obviously diesel sets and natural gas and everything else but with the changes in legislation and more environmental awareness of people, uh, people want lower carbon um, emissions from engines. The only way you can do it at the moment or presently is to change the, the gas input into the engine. We're obviously a, a big user of oxygen on the site. Um, the site we're on now is our acute hospital or our acute site. So we deal with anything from a road accident to the COVID patients that are now coming in. So a, as a result, we have high oxygen usage. We do have some benefits that we are quite close to the oxygen facilities, but the fact that we could potentially be able to produce our own oxygen to use on site. It's a real win for us and it's another sort of added benefit, another cost saving approach that we can take as a hospital moving forward. But obviously the, the real driver for us as a CHP is, is one of economic uh, sense that this CHP behind us uh, will, will save the trust in the region of uh, around £800,000 a year by, by generating the electricity on site as opposed to importing it. So that, that was the real driver for this project, why, why we did it and why we've got this set behind us. Long term, if people get their own hydrogen, obviously from electrolysis production, we can deliver 100% hydrogen engines now with the changes that's coming to the national um, gas infrastructure in the UK. In the next five years, six years, you're gonna see a, a blended increase of hydrogen into the gas lines. Obviously, the, the major step change is moving to 100% hydrogen because you then re really are truly zero carbon.